Buried in the dense jungles of southern Mexico is one of the world's most fascinating archaeological sites. Producing historical revelations important enough to influence modern day beliefs and even conspiracy theories. In this video we'll explore the ruins of a powerful Mayan city-state and some of the most stunning remains of Mesoamerican civilization. This is Palenque. So I'm like a monkey stand right now. <laughs> After a few weeks in the Yucatan Peninsula, I arrived to the city of Palenque on an overnight bus from Merida. So it involved a few minor setbacks and a couple of bus delays, but I finally made it to the town of Palenque. And I'm just about ready to see the ruins. But first it's time for some tacos. So that was as good as any meal I've ever had for $3, and I think I'm finally ready to take a Collectivo to the ruins. Collectivos, or shared van rides, are the main way to get around town. Just a heads up, please practice common sense safety precautions when visiting the city. It's in the state of Chiapas, which is an ongoing conflict between the authorities and the indigenous guerrilla forces. So it's not as safe as Merida or Tulum, which are safer than most American cities to be honest. But just be smart. The best time to visit Palenque is in the morning, but I didn't get to do that this time because I arrived to the city in the middle of the day. The on-site museum is on the road out from Palenque and it's definitely worth a visit to see many of the artifacts that were discovered during the excavation of the ruins. Palenque is in the south of Mexico, in one of its rainiest areas. Palenque was among the most powerful Maya cities in the classical period of Mesoamerica. It flourished between 226 and 799 AD, and then it was completely abandoned around 900. After its abandonment, the city became buried in the surrounding jungle and wasn't excavated until the 20th century. After the museum, I accidentally took the side entrance into Palenque instead of the main one. No one even checked my ticket that I got at the museum. It was kind of confusing because no one else was going in and some people were coming out that way, but whatever, I made it in. Only 10% of the city has been excavated to date. So if you decide to stray off the beaten path, you might come across some unexcavated pyramids, maybe some tropical birds or even some howler monkeys. I found one. The greenery and wildlife of the site makes it quite different from the Mayan cities in Yucatan. It looks a lot more like Tikal in Guatemala, if you've seen my video on that. But it's older than even Tikal. Once inside, I spent a bit of time scouting the ruins and finding the best spots in the city. But right when the golden hour was about to come up, I knew it was time to go south and uphill to this temple of the cross complex. The Temple of the Cross, the Temple of the Sun, and the Temple of the Foliated Cross are a set of temples on top of step pyramids on top of this little hill. The Temple of the Cross was constructed to commemorate the rise of a new ruler to the throne after the death of Pakal the Great. Make sure you go all the way to the top of this one because you can see some stunning views of the city of Palenque. And especially of the main palace. The palace is located at the center of the city and is its largest building complex, measuring 97 by 73 meters of the base. This was built by generations over 400 years. The palace was used by the Mayan aristocracy for bureaucratic functions, entertainment, and ritualistic ceremonies. The palace's most recognizable part is this four-story tower that is known as the Observation Tower. The palace was also equipped with large baths and saunas which were supplied with fresh water by an intricate water system. The Mayan name for the city of Palenque was actually Lacma, literally meaning big water. The modern name of Palenque came from the neighboring Spanish town that was founded in the 16th century. The most famous ruler of Palenque was undisputedly Canish de Pakal, or Pakal the Great, whose tomb has been found and excavated in the Temple of Inscriptions. The temple houses the second longest hieroglyphic text known from the Maya world. The longest being in the city of Copan, which we're gonna go over in a few weeks. 
The hieroglyphs found in the city have revealed hundreds of years of Maya history. They talk about alliances, trade, exchange, wars, and even marriage between the Maya cities. The discovery of the sarcophagus of Pakal the Great within this temple is arguably one of the greatest stories of archaeology. Elberto Ruz, the director of research at Palenque for Mexico's National Institute of Anthropology and History, had spent four seasons digging down beneath the floor of the Temple of the Inscriptions. It was ridiculously hot and very dangerous work. At last, in the summer of 1952, Ruz shined his flashlight through the peephole that his workers had cut through the limestone, and he discovered the sarcophagus. For the first time in more than a thousand years, human beings saw the mesmerizing carved sarcophagus lid of the great ruler of Palenque. His tomb was covered with a very heavily decorated lid, and he was buried wearing an elaborate jade death mask. The findings from the tomb can be seen today at Mexico's Museum of National Anthropology. You might remember that place if you had been following this channel for a while. The iconography on the sarcophagus lid depicts Pakal as a manifestation of the Maya maze god. The lid of this tome led to Palenque playing an important role in modern day beliefs about the Maya calendar and about the end of the world that was expected by many to happen on December 21st, 2012. There was apparently this influential guy named Jose Arguelles who studied art history and he had a wild imagination. He attributed the origins of the Mayan calendar to quote unquote galactic Mayas. He believed these were ancient astronauts that had visited the ancient Mayas. He also claimed that one of these galactic Mayas was, guess who? Pakal the Great. So in December 2012, he, his crew, and many other people who believed that the world was about to end or transform in some way all came to Palenque. Some were so sure that something was going to happen, they didn't even buy return tickets out of Mexico. So after the day was over and nothing happened, some of them were left stranded, wondering what to do next. Right next to the Temple of Inscriptions is the Tomb of the Red Queen, the burial chamber of a woman whose identity is still the result. Her sarcophagus was discovered in 1994. It takes the popular name from the fact that the remains of the woman and the objects in the sarcophagus were covered with bright red cinnabar powder when the tomb was first discovered. Her skeleton was covered and surrounded by a large collection of jade and pearl objects, some of which you can still find in the museum that we went through at the start of the video. With that, I'm gonna end this video. If I missed anything important that you think is worth mentioning, or especially if you find mistakes, once again, please do let me know in the comments. And that is gonna be a wrap for the ruins of Palenque. As always, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. If you like this video, don't forget to like this video. And if you really liked it, feel free to subscribe to my channel to get more videos like this. Catch you guys next time.